Okay, so I'm David Hoffman. I'm Israeli, divorced nine years, age 52. I feel abused by the Israeli law because they bring me to point that I'm desperate. I don't want anymore to live. They took everything that I have. They took my freedom, my passport, my driving license, my bank account. I nearly almost didn't see my little daughters. And I know that I have a, war a warrant, arrest warrant for prison because of payment of children's support. But even that I have paid, judge, and go in these very courts, do what they want, do what they feel. I feel abused by the Israeli court, my family court, and if I had a chance to live Israel, I will do it gladly. How do you feel about your human rights here? In Israel, in Israel, there's I have a right all the time that I'm married, but when I get divorced, I have no human rights. I'm good for for the army to serve in the army, in reserve or in the ordinary, to die or to get injured for the state to pay taxes. But when I get divorced, I have no no any rights. What? Just abused by the government, by the law. What would you like the UN to come in and do? To investigate. Investigate and to force the Israeli gov the government to change all, all the law and all the, abu the abuse against divorced people, divorced men. Thank you. So your name is? I'm Benjamin Shalom. And mm. your nationality is? I'm Israeli. And um, how have you been tortured by the Israeli system? Uh, since I divorced, my life, I have no life since I'm divorced. Because uh, since then, I have troubles with the court, the higher court, uh, the rabbinic uh, court. Which, uh, you can't find such system in any other uh, place in the world. Also, the uh, lawyers say, what is going there is unbelievable, unbelievable. They do whatever they want to, as they did at my case. They decide one, one decision, and the day after, they decide the opposite. The, the, the wife and the lawyers can lie as much as they can. You can bring proof as much as you can. They don't care a damn about it. They just want you to be in their hands for years and years and you can't success. You spend money on lawyers, on uh, uh, psychologists, everything. They, 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 they break you till you are on the ground. And this is all because you're a man and a father? I'm a father. I have I know so many friends that do not see their children. I have two friends um, which are dead now. Alon Wolf and Darin Toran who came with me to the, the um, demonstrations near uh, Tsipi Livni, the Ministry of uh, Justice, before Ayelet Shaked, which is the Minister of uh, Justice now. And they just say one sentence. We are learning the subject of Schnitt and Schiffman, which is the parents are equal and they don't want us to be equal. They want only our money. They want us as, as dogs who, 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 who go to fight in Lebanon. I have been in Lebanon, in, in, inside Lebanon for years and years. And since I divorced, I am a uh, person without any rights in Israel. So it's amazing. You fought for your country 
And when you need your country, what's happened to you? They don't give you uh, to, to, to have your children also. They say the mother is uh, the one who is a better person to be with the children. And you see, see them from now and then. Where do you and go to complain? Money. Where do you go to complain here? Who can you, who can you go to to complain? You, you, you complain to anybody. I complained last uh, last week to the uh, to the president uh, Ruby Rivlin. He says that he doesn't want to interfere in this. They say they don't want to come to our tent, which was uh, near the Knesset, because I wanted him to 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 come there and support us, because we want to be equal, not more than the uh, the, the mothers. We want to be. We have. We want to. I want our rights, and they don't give us. The Prime Minister never spoke about it, the President never spoke about it, only uh, Gila Gamliel, the, the Minister Gila Gamliel and the uh, member of Knesset, Yoav Kish, and in the past Moshe Feiglin, they were the What would you the like ones. the UN to come and do to of help course. you? Of course. What, would you, what do you need? Uh, the UN, a uh, few years before, already said that the situation of the divorced uh, fathers is uh, like a hell year and they are right i know it's exactly hell year you have no rights and i'm like a dog here without any rights so you want the un to come and help and see of again course, of course to help you you see that they do not care about human rights here okay thank you okay what's your name Hello, my name is Chaim Levy. The ID name is Asaf Minchas Levy, I changed it. Uh, my mother is a social worker, juvenile welfare officer. Uh, she takes children out of the parents' house and diagnoses them and puts them in uh, institutions and boarding schools. She takes pregnant women to abortions. Um, all her life she used to work in that job and now she's in pension. Uh, in two weeks I'm going to be 37. My brother is uh, 30 in uh, one month. Uh, she destroyed us. She took us to uh, medication, hospitals, diagnose us, psycho clinical psychology, psychiatrists, therapists, all our lives from the age of five. She decided we were uh, disturbed. We, w we need medication, we need the uh, therapist, we need the uh, clinical uh, uh, diagnosis and treatments. Uh, both my parents abused us, uh, me and my brother. Um, the system here, what she did in her job with other children, with other families, she did exactly to us. I'm trying to have normal life. I'm trying to have a marriage and children and try to get out of this situation as a civilian of Israel, a citizen. And um, I, uh, the authorities and the government and the, all, all the all the authorities here, they just it's just talking to a wall. They don't believe me. They don't um, uh, help me. Uh, I'm stuck in this situation. She destroyed our lives. My brother is in much worse situation. Is uh, almost that he's he's taking medication for years. Is is in uh, comes and goes to hospitals. Um, he. Uh, what human rights do you think you have here? Uh, basically, the psychiatric file and the disability, uh, which is general, general disability and incapability of working, and the exam from the army and all the all the file and records. Um, basically, I don't have any rights. I'm not a, a human, uh, like my father said. You'll never be a human. You're not a human, and you'll never be a human. Um, I, I, I want the, the people from the world, outside of the country, I want them to come here. I want you to come here and see for yourselves. I want you to see for yourselves me, uh, uh, what my mother does, what social, worker do, uh, social workers does, uh, do here. Um, uh, to children, to families, to mothers, how they destroy families, how they take away children. Uh, you, you see the reasons, you see the, the claims that they have. You, you're gonna see what, how children get get ruined, get destroyed by the by the institutions and the medications and the, all the all the diagnoses and all the treatments. And uh, from the beginning, uh, we were normal. We were completely normal and healthy. I don't 
think I don't have I don't I, I think I don't have the I believe I don't have the sickness and the illness but um, and she 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 insists she calls them she talks to them she has until today she has a she has a person in Jerusalem I'm, I'm living in Jerusalem she lives in Kabyalik which is north to Haifa she has a person until today gives her a report on me all the time and she delivers that to the authorities she used to call the police, she used to call the social workers, she used to call the psychiatrists. I'm talking about when I was 24 and a half, I came to Jerusalem. And she kept doing that until I was 28 and a half. Then I stopped going to the social workers. Then she came to Jerusalem and met that person. And until today, I'm 37. Until today, she, she keeps on talking to him, asking him about me, and he gives her, uh, delivers her messages and, and reports. Like and, a, and this happens to all the children that she stole as well, you think? She, after she took them out of the parents, after, after she gave them all the diagnoses, all the psychoanalytic, psychosocial, psychodidactic, psychodiagnostic, psychoclinical, psychocognitive, psycho... Uh, to normal children. To, I, I Well, she says every time the children were not normal and the family were not normal and the mother were the mother was a, a, a single mother and divorced woman and, and uh, not functioning and not capable of raising the children. Oh, so she has, she, she said every case and every time and the pregnant women she took to abortions, she forced them, she took them by force. She decided what to do, who lives and dies, who gets out? Who stays with the mother? Who? I don't know. I don't even think there were there were one case that the child really did stay with the mother or who came back to the mother. Chaim, who do you go to complain to in Israel? Who do? Where is there to go? I went to state. I mean, predict. in general, I, where do, where I can you? I went to the office of the bureau of the state critical, state critical, my vacation dinner, and uh, it's it's like uh, none. It's like uh, useless. And I to, I went to the I went to the court to the family court. I went to the lawyers, I, I went to legal aid bureau, I went to uh, pro bono bureau, which is a uh, 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 bureau of uh, lawyers uh, in Israel, the, the uh, formal, the authority of lawyers, yeah, the bureau, the office, Lishka uh, Dochadin, uh, it's like talking to the walls. So do you feel there are crimes against humanity going on for the Jews inside that yes, no one knows and, about? Yes, and, and ruin and destroying their rights. They they take away the rights of the of the citizens. They take away the the basic human rights. They they they, just, they do it they do it to mothers. They do it to fathers. They do it to children. They do it to girls. They do it to babies. Listen, look. You they, need help here. Yeah? They they take children. They take babies out of the womb of the mother, for God's sake, from the hospital. They 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 have a, a package package for the baby. They like uh, have a what do you call it a um, caring package. And they just take the baby. Yeah. They say the mother cannot raise him. They decide. Look, they have, they have diagnosis. They have uh, social reports. They have. She told me. She told me. She 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 has two degrees in the university. She 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 uh, went to. Okay, so you need you you would like the UN to come in and see. I want the UN and I want the the, 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 the whole the whole world. The, the, every every company in the world to come. Whoever can and, and possible to, to deal with that, the UN and, and, and whatever, and other other people, whatever. I want I want each and every person from all around the world to come here uh, and see for themselves, and I want them to get impression. I want them to see and hear for themselves. I want them to be witness to that, witnesses to that uh, things, crimes, ruining, destroying people. I want them to study my case and other people's case and, and say their opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Go. My name is Annette Collins. I was born in England, grew up in California, live in Israel for over 30 years. And I never, in all the years I'm on this planet Earth, did I dream that the welfare service, the government of Israel, could treat the citizens and the people of this land so badly. They take away the rights of the parents. They take away the rights of the father or the mother or the grandparents. They steal children. They throw them into quote unquote boarding schools, but I don't call them boarding schools. I call them boarding jails. There, they mistreat the children. They don't feed them properly. They don't take care of them. 
children are not allowed to drink water in the middle of the night. Sometimes people get thirsty at night. Yeah, sometimes people do get thirsty. They mistreat them. They lie about them. They go into court with a lot of lies. They say, oh, it's a neglectful family, or they didn't want to test them enough, or they didn't want to give them narcotics. They didn't want to give them Ritalin, or they didn't want to test them or do A or B or C or D. So tell me, um, what kind of torture has it been for you and your family? First of all, for over a year, we didn't get to see my grandchildren. And then when we finally got to see them and they opened their mouth and told us what was happening at night at Adasim Emergency Shelter, we were in shock. So like any normal family, we went to the hospital to check. We waited 19 hours, children weren't checked. Hi, can you tell us your name? My name is Bill Buzaga. And what's your nationality? I'm born in Canada and I'm Israeli from 2002. Okay, um, how do you feel that the state has tortured you, the system of Israel has tortured you? Well, they haven't taken my, my proofs or my accounts into consideration every time they question me. You know, they close the cases every time, but they give the the power to the to the ex-wife, or back then before she was ex-wife. Uh, everything she says is gold for them. They put restriction orders on me uh, a few times. They put me in jail until proven innocent, and I was proven innocent every time. She made false accusations on me. She was even arrested as a suspect for her, and still not nothing happened to her. I still don't get to see my kids. I had to go see my kids in a closed room with the one mirror and a camera with two people that I couldn't even speak to my kids properly. I had to play with them for an hour a week, three hours distance from my hometown because she moved. So the crime is that you're a father, you're a divorced father. That is your crime, That's basically. my crime, to be a father. That's to be a, fa uh, a, a father. crime, so to speak. So... Unfairly and... and do you have a criminal record because... None, you're... none whatsoever. Even though you've been to prison? Prison um, for three days, another time twice two days and uh, arrested a few times in questions and then released every time. Yeah. When you go to court, what chances do you have as a man? I'm just, I think they just make money every time I appear. I have no chances. Every time I bring them proofs, everything, they don't consider them. They tell me to be quiet. They listen to me out of maybe politeness. There's nothing I can do to help myself. What kind of a life would you have or have had if these things hadn't happened to you and you'd spent all these years fighting, what what would your life have been like? I wouldn't be in debt so much okay. from all these uh, payments. I wouldn't be in debt from wasting my time trying to deal with such a corrupt, corrupt uh, civil court and rabbinical court. And uh, everybody's corrupt. I mean, they just don't care. Nobody cares except you and certain people, which I hope to help myself with my case. It's absurd what's going on. I mean, you can make a movie out of it. I would be, I would, I would, I'd be wealthy. I, I would have had a business. I would have had my plan going, like a family. But you know, who can you tell? Because um, who can you tell about the problems? Who can you go to? God. That's nobody it. Nobody can help. Nobody helps. I, I notice that it's just absurd. Nobody has time, and nobody helps. I just, I'm, I'm just hoping that she will calm down and let me have my kids on a balanced level or something. Some, some. Every time I, she gives them to me, she cries kidnapping or beatings or molestation or whatever she cries, false accusation, every time. And my kids, they know it's not true, but they're traumatized sitting there. They're getting hit by her. They're getting... It's just a domino effect. How they would hit, it be... All the kids hit each other. After all. If you were in Canada going through a divorce as a father, would it be any better? I assume. I have never... Right. In here for so long, I don't know, but it's just pathetic the system here. Pathetic. pathetic. So it's breaking you. I mean, it, it bre broke me already many times. I'm I'm surprised I'm still alive. I've, I'm I'm I've almost given up so many times, and maybe subconsciously I do give up a little bit. But I and I hope that it's going to work out with time. Because sometimes she calls me and goes, "Okay, I can't handle them. Take them, or I need money." It's Did you ever go to the district court, the Supreme Court? Have you tried everywhere? Or I mean, uh, yeah, he, he yeah. He told me I can't. I have a free lawyer who tells me I can't. I right. can't do this. I can't. He told me that even if she's a crackhead prostitute, beating the kids, she's still gonna get get them. She's. He told me that the social workers and the women 
are stronger than, the, than God in this country. So if you were to ask for help from the UN, um, what help would you, what, what do you want them to do to help you? I think they can help, because they don't, they don't help much in this country. They try, they put all these accusations on Israel, so why would they help with such a small thing when they're trying to help with the Arab uh, political, uh, political system and they can't help with that? Why would they help me with my own family? I don't know if they can help, but if they could, welcome. They Welcome, don't. They don't know. Absurd. They don't know about the torture of people inside Israel. They don't know about the Israelis. So if they if they can help, welcome. Baruch Haba, because you know they don't help. Thank you.